Whether you're feeling sentimental, curious, in the holiday spirit, or just ready to party, we've got December events for adults in any mood. Join the Horzowski Trio on December 7th for Homage and Celebration, which will explore musical works as a means of honoring the memory of composers nearest and dearest. Included in this special concert are works by renowned Longy professor Nadia Boulanger, Latvian composer Peter Vasks, and Tchaikovsky. Go to longy.edu for more information. The Boston Center for the Arts Plaza Theater is spreading holiday conclusion that uh, all languages are related, no language is isolated, no language is above others, and all present languages are remnant of the original ancient language. So uh, you will see on the screen that uh, this is the basket starfish. As long as we look at language like that, we will have not have any hierarchy because we came from the same core. And uh, I will present to you an Eastern feminine uh, perspective because uh, I think sometimes the scholars do not see what I see as a traveler. And here I am, and tonight I'm going to continue what I uh, was talking about last week. Last week I got too comfortable, I carry on, I couldn't finish my theme. And uh, this week you are going to look at the ancient symbol of energy again. It will be in the form of wind, air, and also in the form of a bird, in the form of a bull. And you will see the connection of the three uh, ancient symbols of energy keep uh, coming up in different uh, ways. So uh, here I am, I'm going to continue with the slides. Give me one second. Okay. Okay, in order, again, in order to understand uh, the, the development of language, it is impossible uh, not to look at the spiritual world of the ancients because uh, the concepts were built into languages a long time ago in a very multifaceted way. And again, I am going to talk about the moving air, which is wind, and also the bird and the bull. And they are not the animal itself, they are, they are actually the same symbol for ancient uh, people's energy and as you can see uh, right here uh, in during the ice age especially you can actually see air coming through your nose and those kind how would the ancient express it you know uh, as a symbol of energy it actually become a very important part of our language they understand it whenever a living being uh, is alive you can actually make those r a e o u sound those are actually living sounds so to the uh, Indians now uh, the people from India they still believe that all vowels are the soul of the consonant and also is a soul of speech it which is true in a way because if you are not alive you won't be able to make any sound at all and of course you know that bullhorn animal actually turned around and become the A and is embedded into a lot of our language word, uh, our energy words. First of all, it is air. Uh, what I'm going to show you is mostly Greek, as most of the people actually look at Greek as uh, the origin, but I uh, that's why I'm showing you a lot of the connection from there, but of course the connection started a long, long before that. And you have the air, you have the animal, which is the wind and um, because energy is never stagnant energy is always moving around and also because the Greek believe that blood is uh, where the soul lives so aima actually means blood and if you turn the air around you can see clearly that two horn animal and uh, what I show you just now is a Chinese symbol whenever you see that symbol we also twist it around different direction we uh, use it to represent any unseen animal Energy. So, um, it, so it is very uh, natural that whenever you see any soul being, like these words like animal, anthropoid, um, also andre, which is the Greek word for, pe for man, and also alma is a Latin word for soul, and atman is the Sanskrit word for soul, and atman 
atom, which is the German word for breath, they are all started with it, this little energy sign A right there. And also the English name Arthur actually is closely connected to the Sanskrit Arthur, Arthur, Arthur and Adi actually means something uh, begins and which is the cause of your being. So uh, this is a very important A right there. And also uh, whenever you see that, you will also see a lot of motion words started with the A, E, I, O, U, any of the vowel sound as action, alive, all these words are that I just wrote there. And then also the emotion, because the emotion is that little energy that's inside your, your, your inside you. So this angry word and audacity, all these were started with the A, because the uh, energy is already embedded into it. So English is not as new as you thought. All this formation was, was already formed a long, long time ago. So this week I'm going to continue with the bird forms and the sound. Last week I already talked a little bit about the, the three different old uh, languages. The first one, this R, is to marry in cuneiform. They uh, understood it as the sound of a bird. And of course, you see the air line. If you twist it 90 degrees, you will see the air line right there and showing the motion of air. And then the Egyptian hieroglyph has the uh, voucher right there uh, showing uh, a representation of the word R, uh, the sound R, I should say. And uh, the Chinese actually have an R word uh, representing a raven or a crow. So all, all those are actually uh, the uh, bird of prey, and, uh, but I will circle this out because the bird form is more closely connected with these two English uh, consonants that you always deal with. It is the hard G, G, or the soft G, J sound. As you can see, the form of them is actually originated really from the bird. And um, today I'm going to lump them up together. We, uh, the heart will, uh, heart sound, I will be talking about the G, K, G sound. And also the soft J will be also the Ch, Ch, J, J, Z and Z sound and of course the linguist will give you 2,000 different symbols but then in the real world as I travel around all these sound were actually the same you know treated the same you know by people and I'll show you some very uh, con uh, interesting words right th here um, the Chinese actually have a picture of a bird we call it a uh, joy joy or the, the mandarin will be ch right there it actually become um the bird radical whenever we see this radical we know that we're talking about the bird and the linear b which is a proto greek you know before the greek settled in that area there is there are people there were people there who used this uh, writing system which is called the linear b the linear b has a joe Sang, can you see the uh, silhouette of a bird? And actually, the Japanese, you know, far, far away to the east, actually uh, maintain the, the sound right there, juru. For them, it actually means the crane. As you can see, this gathering bird actually stayed right there. The Chinese hold the sound as the general bird, but the Japanese actually hold it very closely to the original form as the crane, the bird itself. And the Coptic, which is also in the um, Mediterranean area, in the e in, in Egypt, between Egypt and, and Greek, and, and Greece, and the Coptic uh, alphabet, this is a gamma. You see, this is also the bird form right there. And then the Greek has this word, uh, Yerano. Actually, you when you spell it out, it's like a Gerano, but the present Greek will pronounce it as Gerano or Gerano or Gerano. You will hear different people pronounce it differently. But after all, this is the form of in English, and this is the form of that bird in as a crane. Okay, so either it's a K Haji or a soft J Ch sound. Okay, but I want to show you why I love this two uh, groups together. Um, the heart, as I said, will be this G, K sound. Even the linguist will be using this G sound, which the Greek will be using right there. And then um, these 
all this symbol were the linguistic symbol, you know, for all this churches, uh, all this dental, uh, uh, fricative or whatever you call them. But to make it easy for normal people as I travel around, normal people actually lump this all together. And you will find that a lot of this sound has a lot to do with birds in different languages. And I will go on to see. Uh, after that, after you see the bull as the spirit, the soul, I will also show you the bird also was used as an, a little bit lighter spirit, as an agile spirit. As you will see, this also is pronounced as a soft J sound, okay? And the little bird, as you can see here, the Latin, this is how the Latin write the G, and they have the gaius right there as a J bird. This is J bird, the tiny little bird. and Actually, um, the English word, all you say about glad, glee, gay, actually uh, also mutated into the joy word. All this J joy were related because up till now, uh, even in Chinese, a, a lot of the description for happiness is the jumping around like a bird, you know. Oh, so uh, somehow uh, the meaning still uh, hidden in a lot of languages, but sometimes it does not uh, reveal itself directly so you have to look at the meaning of the word and either it is hidden as a form or either is hidden as the jumping of the bird is to show happiness okay this is the Chinese word again joy a chir, right there and it's for the bird and this is Sanskrit cha can you see the form right there this is cha and for Sanskrit, whenever you see this, either it has something to do with life itself or it has to do with speed, fastness, okay? And then this is Coptic, as I said, there's a G, hard sound, and this is a, you see how similar it is? This is read as hard G, this is read, uh, read as soft J, okay? So we flip this around and we actually use a lot of the similar sound to pronounce them. And this is Siddham. Siddham is actually used in uh, to record uh, Buddhism in the East. And a lot of the Japanese actually still use this uh, writing system to, to write uh, Buddhist mantras. Okay, this is a jar. Can you see the similarity between this bird and that bird? And this is Tibetan. This is also a jar. And and this is Z in Tibetan, and they just flip it around. This is J in Tibetan, and in also Tibetan, they have a more direct uh, bird form. This is J, and this is Ch. Can you see all the birds are flying around? And it represents all this lump of these uh, sounds, Ch, Z, J. All the linguists will be uh, representing them with different symbols, but. Uh, they are actually all the representation of the bird itself and this is Turkish chair and a lot of the word about speed also and also grouping were will be using this symbol right there. So a lot of the people in the ancient time, they actually used the sound to represent uh, the, the concept itself. This is linear B Joe, as you can see, this is the bird. And um, this bird itself is different from this tiny little bird. The bird actually comes to the long neck uh, water bird. This is Grus, the uh, Latin word for crane. And this is uh, the Greek word Gregory. Gregory actually become uh, your word, uh, your name Gregory. Gregory actually means speed, actually uh, swift and fast. Okay. And um, as I said, you know, whenever you see a lot of these uh, words, whenever you see a lot of G, it always means uh, trapping, chattering, and also the speed itself, which is uh, the representation of a bird. From that Gregory, you can also see the English word aggregate. Can you see it very clearly? The Gre here is actually the root pointed back to the grooves, the crane itself, because the crane is an aggregated bird. So a lot of these um, words were used for gathering, jamming, migrate, and also pilgrimage. And also even when they started 
to uh, train the falcon. They also have the falcon tree as the uh, chief falcon. So whenever you see this G, sometimes it's actually representation of the bird itself. And Chinese also have three birds form to represent Zap. Can you hear the sound Zap? Okay, Zhe right there. And uh, we actually means jam. When we jam all three birds together, it truly means jam. And when you say jam, it actually has also the Arabic word jammer. This is the gym in Arabic, the, the alphabet. But whenever you see this alphabet, it also represents the jammer, jammer, all about the group and also places where people group together, like the masjid, which is the mosque where people gather, okay? And it seems that uh, the bird uh, as a spirit is already very clearly uh, registered uh, 17,000 years ago in one of the French caves, Lascaux. And if you look at it carefully, you will see that, you know, the man that was uh, knocked down by the big bull actually turned itself into a bird head. Uh, of course, we, can, we do not have evidence of uh, why it turned into a bird, but as you can see that it seems that uh, the, the bird the spirit is already lingering around 17,000 years ago and all we have now is still part of the ancient tradition and uh, now I want to see uh, uh, how the ancient represent the winged souls and the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph have these three symbols all representing the soul itself. This is of course the bar bird uh, which is part of the soul and this is also ach, they pronounce as ach as the soul and this is the um, goddess of the writing who uh, present herself at the uh, after people died and he is there to register the death of the people the death of the people and then if you look at this is ark the soul when you look at the real bird you understand why people use that bird because in a climate when you look at the ancient Egyptian when most of them are bored on they or they have very tidy tidy wick that they put on their head this bird itself has hair like that which like uh, like people who doesn't comb their hair so for them it's a very uh, poor soul that is uh, like a dead person. That's why this image actually lived on as a ghost itself. And as you can see, uh, I show you some ancient Greek vase that people see, you can see that when people open their mouth, this soul actually fly out from their mouth. It still has a birth form. And why the sound is like that? Because it is normal that when a lot of people die, when they say, ah, and then they are actually dead, okay? So, so this is actually very, very true to nature. And you will see that people have the bird form and the bird actually fly around in different forms and you will see that they also uh, present itself as a uh, different uh, winged soul. But as time went by, the pagan actually took over by the religious uh, uh, tradition the religious tradition actually took the bird over as the holy spirit so from then on the normal people would were, were derive of the wing but who holds the wing but the the normal soul of the people who actually took on other forms uh, become a psych uh, what you what english call the psych and I will show you the Holy Spirit still keep that bird form, but the normal people uh, took on the uh, the psych in English, but in Greek they will say psyche. Psyche is actually like a butterfly form. And of course, you know, the butterfly and the moth is actually very, very uh, similar to each other. I would say it uh, takes on more of the moth form because the moth presents itself more in the night. And even in Chinese, when my father died, a long long time ago and whenever those uh, memorial nights when suppose his soul is going to return we are not supposed to kill any insect around us because we believe that uh, all those insects who who's lingering around were one of them should be the soul of our father so this should be the moth form but I want to go in to look into the uh, quick form of psyche itself it seems that the psyche already uh, is a compound word made by two different parts. This he 
right here is actually shows the, the the air itself but before I go into the West I want to show you the Eastern material speech um, this is uh, the picture of uh, the 19th century the last uh, one of the last uh, uh, emperor, emperor uh, of China and this is uh, uh, the Chinese Empress the last Empress uh, the, the wager. This is the year that she lived, and you will see that uh, the Chinese has a habit of live, putting everything you know uh, on their body without if uh, without actually saying it. And this is one of the sign that we always uh, wear. Um, we sometimes we call it a cloud uh, sign. Sometimes we call it a bat sign. It actually shows the flying bat, which pun with the blessedness we call it luck you know so it actually brings the luck that flew uh, and landed onto the person itself or we have this uh, longevity symbol that we wear when there are so many longevity that means you know this person uh, enjoyed a long life or if we don't use that we will use um, she's actually very famous for this hundred uh, butterfly rope that he she used to wear the butterfly word in Chinese is actually is pun with the uh, the the double word and the butterfly is actually uh, sound as deep deep actually as you can see the uh, writing itself um, so 2,000 years ago it actually shows the catching of an energy right there this is the bull energy that uh, were uh, flying around uh, more than 2,000 years ago but as time went by we actually changed part of the writing but this writing more than 2,000 years ago shows very clearly that the, the butterfly dip right there actually shows the holding of the energy and uh, it plays pun with one word which means deep, deep and deep as you can see uh, the other word it actually means uh, people live more than 80 years old it means an aged people but right there the word itself you can see that a flying down with a bird the same like it here either you catch that bull so or the bird so actually flies down to you so both of them show still shows that the uh, two very very important ancient symbol of the energy so um, uh, of course you know the dip uh, because the uh, sound itself actually the dip uh, also puns with the Greek word dipla dipla in Greek uh, actually become your word double the double means the pairing and the marriage so as you can see the Chinese link to the Greek the Greek link to the English so every w uh, language is actually linked and then uh, why she used to wear all this butterfly flying around because the word itself you know uh, the modern writing it means uh, actually the deep right there we use a writing of a generation right there the 30 year means one generation the butterfly times many many generation means the longevity and eternity so um, uh, for us it means a uh, long 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 life okay so I go back to the West now the West the itself the word itself in Greek you have to read it like this psi he okay the he it's he the second part is actually air itself and then but I want to go into the first part right there and the ancient Hebrew actually have the P meaning a mouth the South Arabic have a F actually between P and F this is just a mutation for them fam is also a mouth this is a mouth this is a mouth but you will see hieroglyph the P here P here means to spit out something and then this is Chinese we have a mouth spitting out something we have three different words uh, we're uh, coming out from that either it starts with the P or the B or the F you will see that all this mutation still exists and it all means something coming out from the mouth and the Chinese also have a word say, speak or say like this it's a mouth with three a uh, three point coming out and the coptic has the same thing but without the mouth that's where your english word uh, the i mean the western uh, word comes from psi okay and the psi of the coptic become the greek psi 
see become this part right there this is actually what's coming out from the mouth and i want you to see that the chinese let's go back to the chinese after we have something out from the mouth we have actually uh, air coming out from the mouth and that means exhale but concentrate on the consonant right there either it's p b and f right there everything to do with what's coming out from the mouth and then the sumerian has a very similar symbol like the chinese and then uh but uh, they have a different sound but I don't want to go into this that uh, has a different link but I want you to see the meaning of that that means the being the divine property that enable the co cosmic activity it actually means you know what comes out from the from the super cosmic energy that makes life possible and then the Akkadian it become this Pasu and become Sanskrit the Prana and now you can begin to see what we understand as the vital breath and the vigor and then the Sanskrit also has Purusu and this means the cosmic man the self the consciousness up till now you can begin to understand more what we more than people understand this is the universal principle that little bit of so that we are talking about now we go back to the uh, what we were talking about the energy itself it seems that the ancient already set up a system believing that there is a cosmic energy that blew into us that gave us the soul and that presents itself in all kinds of writing that gave us the life and I want to show you quickly what appeared in the very famous uh, Indian epic, Bhagavad Gita. It shows that the ancients started to uh, control their breath and they were meditating to f try to find their self and also try to control their fear, their anger and desire. And all this were represented by all those three animals. So um, because of time, I will um, also I will begin to uh, I mean I will round up now and uh, my talk today is all about the ancient talking about the cosmic energy the air the bird and also the bull itself they all use this three symbol to represent how they they understood the energy come from the cosmos and then also how they started to understand the self and okay thanks